we can quantify uh, the amount of information that's in these sequences by uh, using the terminology that's used in computer science, and that is bits of information. So how much information content do these things have? And so um, Chris Burge and coworkers uh, did a study on, very, on, on a number of very short introns, the shortest introns in humans and also uh, the introns in yeast. And they derived these consensus sequences and these consensus sequences have this much uh, information in them. And so you can see already, just from looking at the numbers of bits, that the human uh, introns have less information in their consensus sequences than the yeast introns, even though the human introns, there are many more of them and they're much longer. Now, if we add up all of this information, um, the, the yeast uh, intron sequences clearly have more se information in their consensus sequences than the humans. But uh, and I can tell you that what Chris uh, Burge and his colleagues estimated in this paper was that for humans, in order to um, uniquely specify an intron, even of this short size that they were looking at, so below 1,000 nucleotides, you, needed, you need about 37 bits of information, and yet only 23 bits of information are contained in the splice site consensus sequences. So where is that other information coming from? So from the same paper, here is a graph showing um, the relative contributions of intron features to intron recognition in different organisms. And these are the same organisms that we looked at before in terms of um, gene count or intron count and complexity. And what you can see is in S. cervicii, all of the information can, is coming from the 5' splice site, the 3' splice site, and the branch site consensus sequences. But once we get up to humans, much less, only about half of that information is, uh, only about half of the information needed to specify an intron in humans is coming from those three consensus sequences. Some of the other uh, information is the length, the composition of introns, so they're, uh, they're somewhat different in their base composition than exons. But then there's this big gray um, quadrant, and one has to ask, well, what is, what is this other information that, that human introns uh, require? And a clue to that came uh, very early uh, when soon after introns were discovered. So this was a paper uh, in 1983. Introns were discovered in 1977. And uh, the Maniotis and Orkin labs were uh, mapping out um, mutations in the beta globin gene. So mutations in beta globin cause a disease called beta thalassemia. It's a very debilitating blood disease because uh, you do not make enough hemoglobin. And what they found was that um, many of the mutations in, that caused beta thalassemia were mutations in the 5' splice site consensus sequence of the globin gene. But instead of um, completely killing the splicing, of the beta globin gene, what these mutations did was they activated cryptic 5' splice sites in the, the uh, nearby area. So that means that something was telling the splicing machinery that there's supposed to be a 5' splice site in this region. And even though this consensus sequence was mutated, there were other uh, sequences nearby that could serve as uh, viable 5' splice sites. So what is that other information? So to think about what that information might be, let's take a look back at that model of the dystrophin gene that we looked at. So if you remember, here's my long 99-foot rope. And when your eyes are looking at this rope, probably what they're drawn to are the exons, the little pieces of color, and not the rope itself. And so you can actually think about a human gene as islands of exons in the middle of oceans of introns. Um, and so very much like the Pacific, a map of the Pacific Ocean, if you're going to identify the islands, you're going to look at the islands, not at the ends of the oceans. You're going to look at where the islands begin and end and not where the ocean begins and ends.